Right, I'm about to make an English wheel, and what I'm doing is I'm turning the top wheel down. Right, so I've got trued up in the lathe an old wheel off of some kind of vintage cart. I sort of know that simply because the inside here's on a taper, which would be the case with a lot of these, probably on an old wooden shaft. It's a cast iron it's made of, so hopefully it's up to the job in the English wheel. I've trued the outside face up as much as I can get and I've sort of faced it a wee touch here just to through the edge and also here and I'm about to bore it out for a bearing. It's a smaller bearing in the front there. There's the two bearings here. So the smaller one, 20mm shaft, just over three quarter of an inch for your Imperial guys and uh, a larger one for the other side. So let's just get an idea of the size of taper. So we're going to start now, and I'll take you through the procedure of me making an English wheel. Just a tip here: if you're actually cutting cast iron on a lathe, you want to speed slow so that it's a chance to cut into the layer. If it's too fast, I believe it forms a hardened surface and just blunts the tool. So I think I've got this at about 85 RPM it's now. So again, just a wee uh, tip if you're actually going to be turning in if it's made a cast. It's possible I already know this, but uh, I just thought I would add it in anyway. So here's the top bar that will hold the wheel at this end and the hammer at this end. There'll be a tube that will be welded in here to finish that off. That will just I'll weld that on near the end when I've got the proper length. The reason it stepped down is simply to allow me to fit this tube uh, and to keep as much rigidity in here as possible but I believe that the planishing hammer doesn't need as, to be as rigid as the wheel in the English wheel. Right, this is the beginning of the fabricating the English wheel, or we'll now call it a Scottish wheel since it's built in Scotland, and the planisher at the other side. Uh, what we've got here is basically a mismatch of different box section and various bits of steel, simply because I was using offcuts and scrap basically out of my bin. I, just to keep the cost down and use the stuff up. So basically here we've got some 60 by 40 box. We've doubled this up for a bit of rigidity, just with some tacks down the centre of it. Uh, some 80 by 50 box here and some the main section of this is 80 by 80 box and it's tapered down for the planisher at the other side. Angle finder. So you can see that's at zero and we'll lift it up and ninety point one probably just needs a wee bit of actually turning there and we we'll go to make it level and there you have it ninety degrees so it comes in quite handy so everything's just going to be tack welded just now just to make sure it's all lining up and we'll put some final tacks in it that's why these bits of flat bar are on here just simply to hold it in place, it's only held in with one tack but uh, I'll maybe put a couple more tack snap before we tack on the top bit so I've cut these wee thin strips, these are 2mm thick which takes up the gap between the box section to the outside and the inside and as you can see here I've just put multiple small tacks on it uh, held in place with some G-clamps and then we'll grind these nice and flat and we do this to all four sides and that'll make it nice and tight and central in the larger box side. And this is how it should end up with all four sides tacked on. Again these are two mil thick pieces of sheet that we've tacked on here. I'll grind all these clean and they are going to have a nice tight fit and slide in here. And I've also did this roughly the same for the bottom of this inside here I've tacked on wee pieces of plate. So I've drilled and tapped this, probably see it through there. There's the reason for that 
You also notice that I've drilled a couple of wee marks on there so that I know how to align it because it will only go in, in one direction. And the reason that I've done this, rather than just weld, this is going to be the bottom of the screwed rod for raising and lowering the bottom wheel. And that will be welded on here. Now, I could have just welded that on to the inside to this box section here. But if I ever wanted to, if the thread ever get damaged and ever want to remove it, I have to be able to take the rod out through through the bottom in this direction. So that was the reason for putting this wee extra bit of box section on here. Okay, just to explain why that's there. So here you see it here, the all ground down. Now these are only guide bars here, so you don't need to fully weld them. There's only wee light tacks because they're just stopping it moving sort of sideways in the other box section and that's all they're really doing. So see these are basically just guide bars, that's all they're doing. And when the credit rods attached this will raise and lower this to put some tension between the two wheels. I'll right, just show you here when it's before it's all assembled up. As you can see this is the threaded bar, I'll cut it to size. This section with the nut welded on will go into the bit of bit of box and we'll weld it in there at the bottom and then into the box that slides up and down I will weld this onto the end of that there if you can see that and back to the 30 bar so that will sit over there and then what I'll do is I'll weld this spacer that I've turned out in the lathe and I'll put that on to hold it tight and then I will weld around the top here so that that will still allow it to turn. Right, just to let you see this before I weld it together this is the setup. this is the arm that will move up and down it's going to have this section here welded to it uh, if you can see that as it turns and the washer has been welded onto the top there so that stops it coming off and allows me when it's welded in there to raise and lower this inside this tube this section at the bottom is bolted on simply to hold the nut and plate will be welded onto here simply to hold them in place and allow me to unbolt this and take the whole tube out through the bottom Right, I just wanted to quickly show you this. This is the arm that's going to move up and down. And what I've done is I have tacked in a wee piece of 8th plate, 6mm, sorry, 3mm bar in there, if you can see that, just below the holes. And I lowered that in there, just welded to the bottom of a welding rope an old welding rod, stick welding rod, as I've done with the top here. And it's just a tiny wee tack on one side. See if the camera will pick it up alright, yep. See that? Just a wee tack. And when you force it in the opposite direction it breaks off no problem. And that's this one's all chamfered. It's angled with a grinder. And that's gonna sit almost perfectly flush. and the rod helps me hold it in place while I'm tacking it. Then I just break it off and put a few more wee tacks to hold that. And that's just to stop this whole squishing after donkeys when I'm tightening up this section when it's going over there. And it turns it not into quite solid square bar, but it uh, certainly takes a lot of force then to crimp this now. And we just make it last for years. So just a wee tip there, if you're ever doing anything like that, it's worthwhile just tacking in that wee extra piece of steel in there. And that's bracing it below the hole as well, where it's more likely to squish. Especially through time. And when you bend it against itself, it'll break quite cleanly. So the smallest part of the tack's left and it's easily to take a wee grinder to it and clean it up. And 
I just reuse these over and over again and eventually grind the end off.